Many people have some belongings they consider special and it's common to save things because they could come in useful in the future. Hoarding is when your need to keep things causes you distress or interferes with your day-to-day -day life. People with hoarding disorder have trouble making decisions about when to throw things away. Positions can pile up and result in debilitating clutter. You might be given a diagnosis of hoarding if you find it really difficult to discard or part with positions, regardless of their value, are unable to use parts of your home because they are very cluttered, are experiencing distress due to hoarding or it's affecting other areas of your life, or if you aren't hoarding because of another mental health problem or other health condition. The drive to hoard has been linked with a number of other psychological impairments, from difficulty with attention to problems making decisions. As odd as it may seem that many hoarders' homes are piled with junk and garbage, the disorder is associated with perfectionism tied to a fear of making the wrong decision. Psychologists originally thought of hoarding as an offshoot of obsessive compulsive disorder, but more research and treatment experience have shown that the two disorders don't overlap nearly as often as assumed. To find out what really goes on in a hoarder's brain, Tolin and colleagues use functional magnetic resonance imaging to examine the activity in the brain as 43 people with hoarding disorder were asked to make decisions about keeping items or throwing them away. The fMRI measures changes in blood flow to brain regions in real time, allowing scientists to determine which regions are more active during any given task. For comparison, the researchers also scanned brains of 33 healthy adults and 31 adults with obsessive compulsive disorder. In each case, participants were asked to bring a pile of junk mail and newspapers from home without sorting through it. The researchers then showed the participants pictures of this junk paper while they were in the brain scanner, interspared with photos of similar junk mail belonging to the research lab. Before each photo, the participants were shown a label stating whether the junk mail was theirs or the lab's. The participants were then asked whether the researchers should keep the mail and give it to the participant or whether they should shred it. Unsurprisingly, given the diagnosis, the hoarding disorder group discarded fewer pieces of junk paper and reported more anxiety, indecisiveness and sadness while making their choices than the other groups. Their brains told a more interesting tale. When asked to make a choice about their own mail, the hoarding participants saw a spike in activity in the anterior cingulate cortex and the left insular cortex. The insular cortex is a section of the brain that sits along each side of the head, folded deep within one of the organ's surface wrinkles. The anterior cingulate cortex is deep in the front of the brain. Making decisions about their own junk sends areas into overdrive in hoarder's brain. But when the hoarders made decisions about someone else's stuff, the same brain regions were unusually quiet. Similarly, the insular cortex on the right side of the brain became more active when hoarders looked at their own mail than it did when they saw the lab's junk paper. Depression and OCD did not explain these brain differences. Together, the insula and the anterior cingulate cortex form a network that helps people decide how relevant and important things are. For us to make a good decision, you need a certain amount of activity in that network. Too little and you're not paying attention. You're understimulated. Too much and you're overwhelmed. That's what seems to happen to hoarders, Stolin said. They're understimulated when confronting the vast amounts of junk and clutter that fill their homes. But when faced with a decision that matters to them, these brain regions go into overdrive, overwhelming them to the point where they can't make any choice at all. They avoid it because it's too painful and the clutter continues to build. While the causes of hoarding are not known, a few theories have been explored and applied to this phenomenon. According to Dr. Chu, an assistant professor at Chapman University, the motives for psychological ownership, namely efficacy and effectiveness, a tendency to explore and influence one's environment, self-identity and the need to have a place within the environment, find parallels with emotional attachment to positions exhibited by individuals with hoarding disorder. Individuals with hoarding disorder exhibit hyper-sentimentality, in which possessions are seen as part of the self, echoing the self-identity motive and psychological ownership, and the use of possessions as safety signals, echoing the motive to have a place and find personal security in psychological ownership. Dr. Chu explained. In addition, hoarders exhibit a need for control over their possessions, which echoes the efficacy and effectiveness motivation in psychological ownership. Thus, hoarding may be an extreme form of psychological ownership when viewed through the lens of consumer behavior. The psychological ownership theory highlights the extreme ownership experience of a person who hoards, both in terms of intensity of their feelings and the quantity of items they acquire. Individuals with hoarding disorder also tend to take extreme responsibility for the object as a part of ownership and often make statements that express their concern for the well-being of the object. 
This is a sign of adult anthropomorphism, which research has shown to be a good predictor of hoarding behavior. Victoria Barnes of Nottingham Church University sheds light on two core aspects of hoarding disorder, valuing items and interacting with them. She interviewed 11 people who identified themselves as having hoarding disorder and found that their stockpiled possessions address various psychological needs. They were not seen as useless items, but rather as valuable items with which they interacted. Interviewees were proud to be valuing items that others might not appreciate. They often saw themselves as temporary custodians of the items. Barnes is developing a theoretical model of hoarding based on some of the key reasons behind these behaviors, namely documenting personal history, preserving the past, holding on to the memory of loved ones, relief of anxiety related to past material deprivation, preventing feelings of isolation and loneliness, physical security with positions acting as a barrier for intruders, and avoiding hurting the feelings of items. Early anxious attachments can lead to the avoidance of human interaction and the replacement of human relationship with objects. Individuals with hoarding disorder often have excessive emotional reactivity and negative emotions can be slow to decline in response to interpersonal stressful events. This brings to the forefront a lack of emotional regulation skills and the need to manage these emotions by acquiring more objects. As the number of traumatic or stressful events increases, so does the severity of the hoarding. And that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to watch more videos like this one, you should have a look at our Psychology of playlist. Thanks for watching.